There are so many small objects in my life that don't have a home. Phone, keys, wallet, glasses, watch, receipts, multi-tool, Swiss Army knife, ice pick, pocket tape measure, pocket flashlight. And because these things don't have a home, I'm always putting them down in random locations and then I get frustrated when I need them but can't find them. Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking, just make or buy a catch-all. Well, sorry to all the people out there who make beautiful catch-alls, but they just don't work for me. I live in a small city apartment where horizontal space is at a premium, and I don't really like how everything gets jumbled together in a catch-all. It doesn't feel very organized. Your keys scratch your phone screen. Your headphones get tangled up in your keys. But what I do love is this 3D printed tool wall that I made a few weeks ago. I love how easily accessible everything is, how you can see exactly where everything goes and if anything is missing, and that is what I want for my EDC. So I want to mount all of the holders to a backer board with these number six wood screws. So before we dive into Fusion 360, I need to take some measurements off of these. So the head diameter, 0.3 inches. I'm going to keep all of these measurements a little on the big side so that the screw can easily pass through. Head thickness, 0.13 inches and shaft diameter, 0.15 inches. So now we're in Fusion 360 and we can enter those measurements as user parameters. Head diameter, shaft diameter, and head thickness. I wanna start with the holder for my phone, so I wanna take some dimensions off of that. These don't have to be exact, and I wanna measure with the case on, Let's see, three inches wide, including the buttons. So I'll create a new sketch on the XY plane, draw a rectangle representing my phone, three inches by, how long is this? Really maxing out my calipers here. Five and three quarter inches. Now the thickness of this with some extra space for clearance, call that half an inch. So we can extrude this by 0.5. Now I'll create another sketch, project this body. I'll create another parameter that I'm gonna use for all of my holders. Well, two parameters. The first one will be layer height. Let's do 0.2 millimeter layer height and material thickness. We'll do a multiplier of layer height layer height multiplied by 10. So I'll double click on this projected line offset by material thickness. Then I can extrude this ring to make a new body, turn off my phone. We can close off the back with a new sketch. Probably only needs to be about half the height. And instead of a solid line, let's make this into a nice arc. Something like that. While we're in this sketch, I'll also make some points for the holes. One there, one there. Then I can select these profiles and extrude them by material thickness. Lovely. Then we can split body along this plane and get rid of that whole top segment. I wanna turn the top into a funnel so it's a little easier to get the phone in there. So I'll create a sketch on this plane. I'll extend this up by 0.2 inches. Draw a line down to there. We can extrude this to here and then create a mid plane near that extrusion to the other side. Beautiful. I'll create a new sketch on my sloping surface, and now we wanna create a rim that will hold the phone in. 0.2 inches should be plenty. Project all this, draw a rectangle from here to here, extrude this by material thickness, and then just like before, we can mirror that extrusion right to the other side. We wanna do the same thing on the bottom, extrude this by material thickness. I'm thinking it'd be cool to have a little cutout here for the home button. So I'm gonna create a new sketch on this plane. Right click, extrude, perfect, there we go. Now if we turn our sketch back on, I think it was, this is why you label your sketches, this one. Now we can go to create hole and create two holes at these two points. They're going to be countersunk holes and we can go right from our parameters here. So we have head diameter, we have shaft diameter, awesome. So we got our holes, we got a funnel. Is there anything else we need to add to that? Oh, yes, the charging port. I wanna be able to charge this while it's on the holder. So let's make a new sketch on the bottom. We'll just project the inside walls, draw a line at the midpoint, 0.25, right click, extrude, bring it all the way through. Let's slice and see what it looks like. Actually, I think I am going to reduce the size of that charging port. I'm a little worried about of the lack of material on this corner right here. Go back into my sketch, draw a line across, and now I just need to edit the extrusion, only include that, there we go. Now we have a more reasonable size charging board. All right, go back into slicer. There we go, that looks a lot more reasonable. We're gonna need some support material for these overhangs. Looks good. 
Let's head on over to the 3D printer. So I'm printing the holders out of bronze silk PLA. This stuff looks super cool and I'll have a link for it in the description. All right, moment of truth. Let's see how it fits. Ooh, that is perfect. Oh yeah, easy. Oh, that's great. Next, I wanna design the holder for the flashlight. If we go tight up against the widest part, it is 0.59. Let's make our slot 0.6 inches in diameter. Create a circle, 0.6. Offset that outwards by material thickness. And then because we're gonna screw this to the wall, it needs to have a flat back. So I'll draw a construction line, connect these lines, and then just mirror these over the center. Extrude by two inches. Now I wanna make a cutout for this pocket clip and that's what'll actually hold it in place. So the width of that, it's about 0.26 inches. So if we do slightly wider, 0.275, that should be good. So I'll create a new sketch on top, right click, extrude minus 1.4. We still need to make screw holes and this might look a little tricky because it's a curved surface. So I'm gonna do a little trick. I'm gonna create a construction plane off the back. I'll offset it by minus material thickness. Now I'll create a sketch on here. I'll project this top so we have that line there. This line onto my sketch, you can see now it's projected right there and why not? I'll project these sides as well. So we have a nice box in those purple lines. We draw a line up from here, and then we can draw a circle. That is our head diameter. Same thing on top. Now, if we created holes right here, we wouldn't have a full countersink because parts of these circles are actually inside our body. So what I'm going to do is select these profiles. I'll turn my body off to make them easier to select. Extrude. And if we bring them out, we'll cut away a little indentation. And now if we turn our sketch back on, we can easily create holes at these points and our countersinks will actually work. There we go. Now we have nice circular countersinks. Now I want to show you what would have happened if we didn't make that little extrusion. If I go back in the timeline before this extrusion, let's try to make the holes there again. You don't actually see anything. You see the back of the hole, but if I do a section analysis, inspect section analysis from the top, you can see that there technically are holes in there, but they're just inside our body. It didn't actually poke through to the other side. That's why we had to do the little extrusion. So I can cancel this, delete this whole feature on the timeline, and then go back to present. And then for the finishing touch, I wanna add a chamfer to this edge. Let's try 0.06. That way when the flashlight drops on, hopefully the clip kind of slots into that chamfer and it holds it in place and makes it land nice and securely. It'll make more sense once we print it. It's funny that we got stringing right in front of the screw holes. We just cut it with the scissors. All right, moment of truth. Oh. Bit of a tight fit. I don't know, maybe it just needs some breaking in. Where's it getting caught? Where is it getting caught? Oh, <laughs> no, this is where it's getting caught. Oh, that makes sense. It's getting caught at this ring here. And that's actually okay. I mean, it's very secure. It just, this doesn't go all the way to the bottom, uh, but it still looks good. I'm happy with that. That's a good solid slide fit. Nice. A while back, I made this leather sheath for my ice pick. The ice pick itself was made by Austin from High Caliber Craftsman. And I put a money clip on the back of this so that I can clip it onto my pants. So for the holder, I kind of want to do something similar to the flashlight holder so I can slide the whole money clip over there, just slot it into place. So this can be really simple. I need about an inch of width for the money clip to fit in there. It only really has to hold this clip part, so 0.1 inch should be enough. Offset that outwards by material thickness, one inch. Like the flashlight holder, I'll bevel that top edge with a chamfer, so it's easy to get that on. Material thickness, so that'll go the whole way. Find the points for our holes, put in all our parameters, and we just need to make some matching holes in the front so that we can actually put those screws in. 
project the outer edge of my countersinks, select those profiles, right click and extrude it through. Actually, before we print, I just realized that this chamfer is on the wrong side. We want this on the inside so it kind of funnels the contact area of the spring. So instead of that edge, I'll select this edge. There we go, that's how we want it to go. Now for my Hamilton watch, I wanna create a sort of oval that I can slide it on, kind of like a watch display at a store. This needs to be loose for sure. Let's see if it's like that, we got two and a quarter by like one and an eighth. I think that should work, two and a quarter, one and an eighth. We'll create an ellipse, 2.25 by 1.125. Actually, I think we can get away with making it a bit fatter. So let's change this to 1.25, offset this outwards by material thickness. And then I wanna make this the width of the dial. So that's 1.75, extrude this by 1.75. Ooh, okay, I know how I can do this. So I'll create a new sketch on here, project the outside, offset it outwards to make a rim. We can extrude that and this by material thickness. So now we have our rim and we need a way to attach it to the wall. I'm gonna construct an offset plane off of this. Raise it just by a bit, maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.3 inches. And then I can create a center rectangle. Let's do like one inch by one inch. Let's draw a line to there. Let me change this so that it includes the center. Create loft from here to these profiles. Actually, just to make this a little nicer, let's go back to this sketch and round these front corners. I'll make a fillet. There we go, 0 0.2 looks good. Nice. And then we basically just have to connect that to the wall. We gotta go right there. I'll create a sketch on this plane, project this line, minus material thickness. I'm gonna have to turn my body off so I can select this profile. Right click, extrude. If I go from this orientation, and we wanna start bringing this around back. Right click, extrude to here. I like it, I like it, it's coming along. I do think that this doesn't have to be so long. We can move this plane a little closer, maybe like 0.3. Everything should propagate, nice. And we need to reinforce these inside corners a little bit. So I'm gonna create some fillets, bring that out. Same thing with this one, nice. Got a nice continuous curve there. We're gonna need some screw holes. So I'll create a sketch on here, draw a line in from here, hole there, hole there, beautiful. And then lastly, we need holes for our bit to pass through. Just select these profiles extrude and just cut two holes through this. Beautiful. Oh, ha. support material popped right off. That is perfect. Finally got my support material settings figured out. All right, let's see how this works. Take my watch off. Nice. It's not bending in any weird, scary ways. It'll be held just like that. Yeah, that's super strong. Sweet. Typewriter back. It's perfect. Right on the way out, grab my stuff, come in, put it in. Perfect spot. Just fits. You know, I could do some fancy 3D printed holder for my keys, but perfect. 
For my Swiss Army knife and my Leatherman, I took pictures of the tool on top of my cutting mat. That gave me a scaled photo that I could import into Fusion as a canvas. I traced their outline and I created holders that exactly match the outline. So satisfying. The holders for the tape measure, my wallet, and business receipts are simple shelves, but they are the perfect size and so satisfying to use. This brings me so much joy. If you want to 3D print any of these holders, I'm going to make all of the files available as a package on my website. So check out the link in the description for that. Sunglasses make it a little impersonal. You can also directly support this channel on Patreon, where every patron gets access to an exclusive behind the scenes Instagram page. Wow, that's really bright, but I think it looks good on camera. <laughs> and I want to give a special shout out to my top patron, my mom, Kathy Kurt. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.